First of all, I would like to thank, thank you, Jamie Glazov, for introducing me. I would like to thank David Horvitz, Freedom Center, Jeffrey Vinia, for arranging this. Of course, ex-Muslims and critics of Islam, Kasra, Shah Husseini. I would like to thank some friends, Adib Obrial, Nurit Gringer, Moti Gur, and the representatives of Kufai, Christians United for Israel, Marilyn and David Ling, Daniel Pipes, of course, for giving the pulpit to my articles in his Middle East Quarterly. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, our story of the religious roots of the Israeli-Palestinian dispute, the story starts sometime around the year of 610 CE, when a person named Muhammad bin Abdullah in Mecca started preaching to his, I want to say choir, his uh, tribe, Quraysh in his town, trying to sell them a new religion named Islam. However, the stories, the legends, the rules, and the ideas which he brings them remind them very well of Jews and Christians. So they accuse him for recycling the legends of the first ones. Asatir al awwalin means the Jews and the Christians. What do you tell us about Noah and the ark? What do you tell us about Abraham and Ishmael? About Joseph and that lady in Egypt? All these stories we know already. So they ac accused him for bringing stories from the Jews and the Christians and selling them as if this is a new independent religion. So from the very beginning of Islam, Islam was viewed as illegitimate, no more than a replica of Judaism and Christianity. And if you want some sediments of paganic religions, which were in the Arab Peninsula until he started preaching to his tribe, mainly the Kaaba. As you know, the Kaaba, the stone which they worship until this very day, was a ma'bud, means um, an idol, which they worshipped, means the uh, pagan Arabs, uh, um, um, hundreds of years before Islam. So from the very beginning, and if you read the Quran, you can see it very well. Okay, leave it. Thank you very much. I will get to the picture. This is the te Temple Mount, but I'll relate to this. From the very beginning of Islam, Islam was under question mark whether it is a real religion or no more than a copy of Judaism and Christianity. And if you read the Quran, you actually have a very deep feeling of polemics, which Muhammad was actually arguing. Yes, alunaka means they ask you or they give you a hard time by questioning you about this. Answer them, tell them such and such. It repeats itself in the Quran many times. Means the Quran echoes the fact that Muhammad was in a polemic all his life, trying to establish the idea that Islam is a valid idea. Another way how to establish the, the idea that Islam is a valid religion was to undermine the validity of Judaism and Christianity. By undermining the validity of those former religions, the only religions which will remain will be Islam. And it is actually embedded in the Quran, in the verse which says, inna deen inda Allah al-Islam, means religion at Allah's is, in brackets only, Islam. Means Judaism and Christianity are void. So this is actually the main idea I think, I think until this very day, where Muslims try all the time to show by all kinds of evidence, 
with brackets or without, that Islam is a valid idea, while the others, Judaism and Christianity, are not existing anymore. Islam, according to this view, uh, came to the world not to live side by side with Christianity and, and, and Judaism. It came to the world rather, that, rather to replace them and to build itself with the ruins of Judaism and Christianity using the ideas of monotheism, using the people who were part of Judaism and Christianity. This is why Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David and Solomon and Jesus Christ were all Muslims because Judaism and Christianity are canceled retroactively. So all those who believed ever in one single God, what else would they be if not Muslims? And of course, King Solomon built a mosque in Jerusalem, according to this rewriting of history, according to the Islamic view. So this is the mindset which accompanies Islam since the beginning of more or less 610 CE until this very day. This is why they object any digging in the Temple Mount, lest Jews might find an, a proof that Judaism was there or is there uh, uh, before Islam. And this um, uh, picture actually shows what, see this site, this is the Temple Mount from above. This is more than the center, this is the south, this is the Al-Aqsa Mosque or the covered mosque. And here in the year of two, uh, 1996, they brought bulldozers to dig this ditch, which at the high side, it's like 12 meters, like a, a three-story building, this height. Bulldozers on Temple Mount, if you dig in such a place, you dig it with brushes in order not to destroy any clay or, 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 or um, uh, coins or whatever can be found for all the layers, the Jewish layers and the Roman layers and the Greek layers and the Persian layers and the Islamic layers, of course, but they couldn't care less about other religions because anyway, Judaism and Christianity are invalid anymore. So what do they need the remains? And, the, and they used in this uh, uh, precious place for archeology, span bulldozers, and they just throw out all the debris which they took out and now, by now, my university digs uh, there and tries to find things, and we found many things will be published after we finished sifting all the, uh, all, all, all the sand. So this shows actually, by the way, if you, if you can see here, there is a bulldozer, still a bulldozer here, you can see this. Very clearly, you can see the bulldozer. Because they couldn't care less about other religions. So this is actually, but what's, a, what's so problematic in this? Every time when uh, Israel does anything in Jerusalem that are outrageous, especially in building in Jerusalem, uh, because their view to building in Jerusalem is something which is unique to Muslims. Why? In their view, since Judaism lost, lost its uh, validity, Jews lost everything which they might have had in history, especially the land of Israel. So some road accidents happened during the last century. First of all, Jews started to come to their homeland after they were uh, sent to exile by the Romans almost 2,000 years ago. This is the first road accident. The second accident happened in 1948 when uh, 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 the state was established. The third road accident happened in 1967, when Israel and the Jews took Jerusalem, including the Temple Mount. What will be the next step? They will rebuild their temple. And thus, Judaism will come back to life as it was 2,000 years ago. What will be with Islam? Because if Islam came to the world to replace them, to, re to replace the Jews, they cannot fathom the fact that Judaism comes back to life in such a form of holding to the Jewish 
capital. And this is the source of what happens today about Jews. It's not about territory. It's not about national rights. It's not about legal rights. It's about religion. Because anything which Jews are doing in Eretz Israel, in the land of Israel in general, and in Jerusalem in particular, poses a danger on the mere being of Islam as a religion, or as a valid religion, which came to the world according to their mindset to replace Judaism and Christianity. This is why those Palestinians, question why they're Palestinians, never mind. When they go around in demonstrations, they carry these, uh, these clothes around their necks, which state that Al Quds Lana, Jerusalem is ours. Since when Jerusalem is theirs? Was there even one day in history when Jerusalem was the place of any caliph or emir or sultan or any Arab or Muslim king who reigned from Jerusalem? Not even one single day. On the opposite, the capital of Jund Palestine means the, the, the uh, district of Palestine since the Islamic occupation of 638 was the city of Ramla. 30 miles to the west from Jerusalem. So since when do they claim that Jerusalem should be the capital of the uh, uh, Palestinian state, which don't see it? However, not only this, even the Mufti of Jerusalem in 1920, 1930, but it has former versions, published this book, this is original, uh, uh, A Brief Guide to Al Haram al Sharif Jerusalem. I have it online, but I will read one sentence, which he writes in this, and this is clear English. He says this. Its identity, means the Haram, this place, its identity with the site of Solomon's temple is beyond dispute. This too is the spot, according to the universal belief, universal belief, on which, and here he quotes a verse from uh, 2 Samuel, David built an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. This book published in 1930. This is the original. In 1930, they didn't see the dangers yet or the road accidents yet. Today, they claim the Jews were never in Jerusalem. There was never a haikal, means a, 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 a temple. And um, the, the connection between Jews and, and, and Jerusalem is a, Jew, a Zionist concoction when the Zionists wrote the Bible after 1948. This is the discourse. And go now, try to prove that there are translations of the Bible from the third century BCE, the Septuaginta, for example, or the Vulgata to Latin from the first century. Okay, so they don't let facts disrupt their religious theories. And this is what we have to face today, the religion and nothing but. However, the, how much time do I still have, Jamie? Three minutes? Give me three minutes. <laughs> this, is why, this is why whenever Israel does anything in Jerusalem, especially building, they become outrageous, especially the Jihad channel of Al Jazeera, operated from Qatar, and uh, they dedicate enormous time in order to bash Israel whenever Israel does anything in Jerusalem. It happened in 2008 when the Israeli government decided to build some hundreds of apartments in Jerusalem and uh, they brought uh, some footages about uh, how Israel allegedly destroys all the Arab parts of Jerusalem and kicks out all the Arabs. Ladies and gentlemen, today in Jerusalem dwell in peace some quarter of a million of Arabs, most of them are Muslims. Okay. Israel doesn't deliberately move them out. If they move out, it's their business. But this is how Al Jazeera poses it. They showed this footage about, allegedly, how Israel cleans Jerusalem from Arabs, as they say. And they asked me to come and to comment on this. هذا القرار 